Check out FlipSideGaming.com for all your gaming needs. Use the promo code HEROES to save 10% on all orders over $10. Hey there, this is John from Heroes and Legends, and welcome to another edition of the Magic the Gathering Market Watch. Now, if you watched last week's video, you're going to know what to expect this week. A lot of the same type of thing is going on in the secondary market. As a matter of fact, there's so many cards jumping in value, I went with that $5 threshold again. You're not going to see a card moving more than $5 up or down today. Now, you're also going to see a lot of reserve list cards spiking again for a variety of reasons. And when people see reserve list cards spiking, the first thing they think of is targeted buyouts. And sure, that's happening out there, happening quite a bit. But there's also other reasons a card could be going up. For example, there's a lot of preemptive buys going on right now. People are seeing other reserve list cards going up in value, so they zero in on some of the cheaper ones that they've been meaning to pick up for a while because they're afraid they're going to spike. Enough people do that, and the card will go up in value. Beyond that, of course, Keldheim just came out, and there's a lot of players, particularly Commander players, that are trying to build decks around some of these new Keldheim cards. And occasionally, guess what? You come across an older card, maybe even a reserve list card that's good with a certain new card, and a lot of players want to pick it up. That's going to cause increases, too. We're going to go into all those details as we go through the video today. Also, too, speaking of Keldheim, we're not going to be talking about Keldheim prices quite yet. Since the set just came out, we need to give those a little time to stabilize. Before we get into it, though, just a fast reminder, if you go to FlipSideGaming.com, you can use that Heroes promo code to save 10% on orders over $10. Currently, you can pick up Keldheim products there, among a lot of other different things on the website. And don't forget to put in that Heroes promo code. For example, if you put it in when you're ordering a Keldheim Collector Booster Box, that will go down to $190.80. And aside from that, whenever your order is over $200 or it consists only of singles, shipping will be free in the United States. Also, too, whenever you use the code, it does support the channel, which is always appreciated, so thank you. And without any further ado, let's get into it. Much like last week, not really a lot to talk about in the world of Standard currently, so we're going to start off with Pioneer. This is your Pioneer Legal Spotlight, where we look at the cards that are legal in that format that are moving the most this week. Just one to talk about this week. It's Crucible of Worlds, the 5th edition copy, down exactly $5 this week. Just made the video to $49.95. Now, this is normalizing down a little after some spikes that occurred over the preceding few months. It does see modern and vintage play, but Commander is what made it hot recently. Zendikar Rising and Commander Legends both push land-centric builds in the format. And that brings us to the modern legal spotlight. Let's look at some cards going down, and then we'll see some that are going up in value. We're going to begin with Krark's Thumb. Now, this is the copy from the list, and you're going to see a few cards from the list down here today. Those prices are still normalizing. This one goes down 503 this week to 2582. Now, this card was hot recently because of Krark the Thumbless from Commander Legends. Next, we have Vesuva. Two copies here, though. Time Spiral down $5 to $49.95, and the list goes down $608 to $36.70. Even though this is losing some value, it is a card that sees play in Modern, Legacy, and Commander. Gemstone Mine, the copy from the list, goes down $732 to $1053. Another card that does see play in Modern, Legacy, and Commander. Pact of Negation, again, the copy from the list, normalizes down $961 to $3850. And this does see play in a lot of places too. Modern, Legacy, Vintage, and Commander. And now for some cards going up in value. Venser, Shaper, Savant. This is the one from Future Sight. It goes up $8.85 this week to $29. This is in those modern Bant Tempo builds that are actually doing pretty well right now in Magic the Gathering Online. Also, this sees Legacy play as well as Commander. As a matter of fact, it is seeing some increased play in Commander now in some of those Orvar the All Form builds. Elvish Champion. So the Elf Tribe has had a lot of support recently, first in Commander Legends, now of course in Keldheim. And it's not just the Keldheim set proper, you're also getting a Keldheim Commander deck called Elven Empire. This would be a great upgrade for that build. Or if you just want to build from scratch around Arthro Blade of Elves, that's the commander for that deck, this would be a great pickup for that as well. The Duels of the Planeswalker copy goes up 506 to 1208 this week. The 10th edition copy, drawing up a little online, it goes up 981 to 1790. I mentioned last week that some 10th edition cards are looking a little dry in the online market currently. This is another example of that. Next we have Balefire Dragon, the copy from Innistrad. It goes up 1110 this week to 3354. This has always been a very solid commander card. A lot of times you'll find this in Kali of the Vast or other Dragon Tribal builds. However, this is getting a push now from some new Keldheim cards. A lot of players are putting this in some new builds around cards like Magda Brazen Outlaw, as well as Torolf God of Fury slash Torolf's Hammer. Birds of Paradise from Revise. Last week I mentioned a lot of Revise cards are getting hot. That trend is continuing this week. And a lot of times it is cards that are on the reserve list. You're going to see some of that later in the video. 
But sometimes it's not. Sometimes there are cards that are going up that have had multiple printings in a lot of different sets. This is a good example of that. Now, one thing to remember, 93, 94 players, there are a couple different variations of that game. There is a variation where they don't let you play revised cards. There is a variation, however, where you can play revised cards, but you can't play reprintings that come later. So there are some 93, 94 players that could be interested in cards like this, especially as those unlimited and alpha and beta cards get too expensive. This week, this goes up 1160 to 6401. And aside from all that, of course, this is a card that sees a lot of play in Modern Legacy, and it's a highly played Commander card. Greater Oromancy. It's been a little while, but this is a Shadow More Rare that has yet to be reprinted. So you know what that means. Time to use my one per video. So obviously, if you watch these videos, you know this already. But cards from this time period in Magic, especially these rares, they tend to get a little spiky when there's some attention on them. Because around that time, there was a recession in the game, less packs were cracked. This week, this card goes up 1340 to 5998. Now, this is a great commander card in those enchantment heavy builds. And now this is seen playing a build around a new Keldheim card, a Sika God of the Tree slash the Prismatic Bridge. This works well there because it does help to protect the Prismatic Bridge. Death Cloud, and this is getting pushed from a new Keldheim card as well in Commander. This time the card is Turgrid God of Fright slash Turgrid's Lantern. The Modern Masters copy goes up 1063 to $17. Dark Steel goes up 1401 to 1990. Finally, for this section, we have another revised card that's moving up in value. It is Bad Moon going up 1435 to 2450 this week. All right, that takes us to the Vintage Spotlight. This is where we're going to start seeing all those reserve list cards I promised you. So, much like last week, there's so much activity in the market that we can't look at everything. I had to create another restriction here, like I did the previous week. Unlimited Arabian Nights, Antiquities, and Legends cards. We're only going to look at cards from those sets if they're moving at least $100 and at least 10%. These are high-grade copy prices we're talking about here. You can find these cards cheaper. Even if you just go down to lightly played, copies can be far less expensive. Also, too, when it comes to these older cards, especially when there are sales of cards that are slabbed, like high-grade 9.5, 9.0s, that can throw off the average a little bit. So if you go to your big websites and you're wondering, how is this card so expensive right now? It could be that you have some graded copies up for sale or maybe even sold recently. So just keep that in mind as we go through today. Now on top of that, yes, there is some market manipulation happening here or there as well. Whenever I get to a card where I can't really find it selling for anywhere near that price, then I'll let you know. We'll begin with a reserve list card, as you can see from the upper right-hand corner of the screen there. It's a revised card, contract from below. Pretty much banned everywhere. It goes up 939 this week to 1806. Lion's Eye Diamond, this does see play in Legacy, Vintage, and Commander. This is getting a little additional Commander play now and builds around Bergy, God of Storytelling, slash Harnfell Horn of Bounty. That's a new Keldheim card. It goes up 1026 this week to 664.17. Peacekeeper, this actually gets a good amount of Vintage play. This goes up 1584 this week to 3739. Yogmoth's Will from Urza Saga sees Vintage and Commander play. It goes up 2422 to 449 this week. Grim Monolith up $30.59 to $420.99. However, this is one of those cards where I can't really find it selling for that price point, honestly. I have seen high-grade copies going for about $330. So it does look like it's trending up. Maybe it will reach this point sooner than later. But at least right now, you can definitely find cheaper copies, even in good condition. This does see play in Legacy Mono Green Cloud Post. It's also a great Commander card and Combo Enabler. And this is another card that's showing up in some of those Commander builds around the card I just mentioned, Bergy God of Storytelling. Intuition from Tempest. This goes up $32 to $243.74. This does get a little legacy play and a good amount of commander play. Null Rod. This definitely sees play in vintage and legacy. It goes up $36.08 to $128.99. Taiga. A lot of dual lands on here again today. This is the one from Revised. It goes up $37.40 to $490. Academy Rector. This does see play in legacy and learn. Also a good amount of play in commander. It goes up $47.60 to $156.99. Talarian Academy, it's banned in Commander, but gets plenty of vintage play. It goes up 5160 to 26099. Volcanic Island from Revised up 8401 to 98350. Scrubland from Revised, this one goes up 9102 to 44999. Helm of Obedience. Now this card does see legacy and vintage play. It goes up 9281 to 150. Force Field up $120 to 54999. This is a copy from Unlimited. Gauntlet of Might from Unlimited, this goes up 185 to 1425, or does it? 
High grade copies are selling for around 730, so I do think this is a market manipulation. Now that's not always malicious. Sometimes there will be a person that will list a card at a very high price trying to edge the market up. But other times people put a card up for a higher price than it's worth because they're fishing for an offer. In the way that the market's been recently where there's so much fear of missing out kicking in, in some cases people are just biting on that buy it now price even if it is overpriced. And that's why you're seeing some of these record breaking sales that we have been seeing. Next we have Savannah, revised going up a conservative 1698 to 36248. Unlimited goes up 20742 to 69999. Badlands from revised up 226.16 to 750. However, high grade copies seem to be selling around 650. Close, but not quite 750. City in a bottle. This goes up 235.31 to 647.29. I've been seeing high grade copies actually selling for about $500, though. Old Man of the Sea up 278.22 to 500 dollars. Bayou from Unlimited up 299.50 to 1017.50. In the Eye of Chaos of 30251 to 48888. Ernum Jin, the copy from Arabian Nights, finally a card not on the reserve list. It goes up 40399 to 89999. In theory, in reality, high grade copies seem to be selling for around $700, which is a lot higher than they were selling for just a couple weeks ago. Mo is next, again, on paper going up 419 to 1508. When you look at high grade copies, they seem to be selling closer to about 1190. So not quite 1200 yet. Tropical Island from Unlimited up 450 to $1,974.99. Chains of Mephistopheles, again on paper, going up $1,049.55 to $2,499.95. And high grade copies seem to really be selling around $1,950 or so. Tundra from Unlimited, this was a big jump up $1,070.02 to $2,699.99. Again, in reality, not quite that high. I have seen high-grade copies, though, selling for around 1900 Underground C, the revised copy, goes up 9778 to 1272 .47. The unlimited copy up 1361 to 2548 .98. This is a good example, and you're going to see a few cards like that in the section of the video, where just higher-grade copies are for sale this week, where they weren't for sale the week before, or maybe the week before that. So that's why you're seeing such a big jump that actually could be legitimate. But again, these are your highest of the high grade copies. Black Lotus from Unlimited going up 2,200 to 18,900 this week. Remember, it was just a few weeks ago that an Alpha 10 slab Lotus sold for over half a million dollars. That's the type of story that gets circulated on social media, picked up by the news. And that does draw people into certain purchases that maybe they would not have made before. So cards like this and a lot of other older cards might be riding that wave a little bit now too. The Tabernacle at Pendrel Vale. This goes up in theory $2,796 to $9,500. Reality, high grade copies, again, the highest of the high grade. They can sell for around $5,000. And finally, in this section, Mox Ruby from Unlimited. If you look at the big websites on paper, it feels like this card's going up $3,254.72 to $9,999.44. I haven't been able to see high grade copies selling for more than $4,500, actually. And that brings us to the Commander Spotlight, and you're going to see a lot of reserve list cards in this section as well. For many of them, because Commander is such a wide open format in general, they see a little Commander play, but a lot of the cards are just really moving because they are reserve list cards, not because of any additional play they're seeing. So if I come across one of those cards, I won't keep repeating myself. If I don't have anything necessarily to add specifically about the card, I'll just move on to the next one. So, a lot to look at. Here we go. Temporal Apertures first up 503 to $30. Seems like it could be a decent card. I do like to play with shuffle effects in general. Undiscovered Paradise up 513 to $39. This does show up in some of the land centric builds in Commander like Omnith Locus of Creation and others. Painter Servant from Shadowmoor. Now, this is a card that typically sees a good amount of legacy play, but the legacy meta, at least on MTGO right now, is shifting away from it a little bit. I could not find any successful decks running painters right now, anyway. That will probably change again in the future. It does see commander play though. It goes up 519 to 5445. Here's another revised card, Veteran Bodyguard. It goes up 528 this week to $8. Altar of Bone. Sometimes you'll find this in Atlaplani Nest Tender builds and more. It goes up 529 to 1798. Kudzu, another card from Revised moving up. It goes up 530 to 1145. Commander Grevin Il Vec up 536 this week to 801. Look at that, it's not on the reserve list. Jin Gataxius Core Augur, the one from New Phyrexia. 
It goes up 537 to 3387. Very good commander card in a lot of different builds. It is a nice target to get into play too in those new Asuka God of the Tree slash the Prismatic Bridge builds. Creature is back again just when you thought you saw the last of this card. It goes up 537 to 9589. Great Wow, this has the increased play in Orvar, the all form builds in Commander. This goes up 542 to 2999. Extra Planar Lands, this is good in Commander builds with Snow Basic Lands, and of course Keldheim is bringing Snow back in a pretty big way. Already this is in a lot of early deck lists around some popular Keldheim cards, including Vorinclex Monstrous Raider. This goes up 551 to 5249. Volrath Stronghold, this is a fairly popular commander card in a number of builds, new and old. It goes up 552 this week to 154.52. Smokestack, it goes up 555 to 1875, and this is seeing additional commander play in Turgrid God of Fright builds. Force of Negation, this goes up 574 to 5997, highly played card in Modern, Legacy, Vintage, and Commander. Replenish, great card in those enchantment heavy builds in Commander. It goes up 597 this week to 108.61. Farmstead, another card from Revised. This one goes up 606 to 750. Willow Priestess, maybe not a bad commander spec. You know at some point a set's going to come out with a focus on fairies. This goes up 623 to 948. Political Trickery, this is seeing increased play now in Commander or Orvar, the all form builds. This is also good in Zedru, the Great Hearted decks in Commander. And it did get a Command Zone mention this week, which could have brought some attention to it as well. It goes up 633 to 1619. Sedge Troll, another card from Revised that goes up 641 to 1539. Covetous Dragon, this one goes up 650 to 940. Frenetic Efreet. Now this got a bump recently when Kark the Thumbless came out in Commander Legends and has cooled off since then. Now it's going back up, 659 to 1504. Conchhorn, this goes up 675 this week to 1549. This is sometimes found in Yuriko the Tiger Shadow Commander builds. Could be good in a Asika God of the Tree build as well. Squandered Resources, sometimes this is in Legacy Alluren sideboards. Also sees Commander play in a number of builds, including the Gitrog monster. It goes up 692 to 4995. Phyrexian Dreadnought from Mirage, in theory going up 692 to 124.99, although I couldn't really find high grade copies selling for higher than 100 bucks. Equipoise goes up 699 this week to 1295. Lord of the Undead from 10th edition. So another 10th edition card drying up in the secondary market a little bit online. This copy going up 713 this week to 2294. And this is seeing some additional commander play now, again, because of a new Kaldheim card. That's Narfi Betrayer King. Michiko Kanda Truthseeker. This is a solid commander card seeing a little more play now in Negan the Cold-Blooded builds. It goes up 720 to 2881. Back to the reserve list for Abeyance. It goes up 726 to $35. Implements of Sacrifice up 728 to 799. Ritual of the Machine up 737 to $17. Sliver Legion from Future Sight up 756 to 12839. So this card does continue to climb this week. Now Sliver decks are always going to be popular in Commander, but remember there's more attention on them currently because Keltime did bring us some new creatures with Changeling. Dwarven Thaumatergist. This goes up 787 to 1289. Now, the Dwarf Tribe also got a boost because of Keldheim. This is seeing additional commander play now in Magda Brazen Outlaw builds. Also, one of those builds was featured on Commander Versus this week, and this card was in it. Guiltleaf Palace, the copy from Mystery Booster, goes up 791 this week to 1648. This does get a little modern play in Elves builds, but obviously this is moving because of the Elf supporting Keldheim again. You might not get a second chance, a second chance. It jumps up 802 to 1981. Psychic Allergy, up 825 to 1448. Another card from the Dark Lurker, up 834 to 1433. Donate, sometimes this is in Zedru, the Great Hearted Commander decks. This goes up 924 this week to 1999. Opalescence, up 947 to 3946. Another card that's good in Enchantment Heavy Commander decks. Thawing Glaciers from Alliances. This is good in Commander, Arkelos, Lagoon, Mystic builds, and more. It goes up 960 this week to 4699. Inner Sanctum up 969 to 1185. Norwood Priestess, this goes up 994 to 8498. Now this is an elf that's hard to find in good condition. It's not on the reserve list, but it's yet to be reprinted, and it is from Portal Second Age. Now with that being said, I don't think people are scrambling to buy this because of Keldheim Elf Tribal Support. I think this is just moving up because it is getting harder and harder to find all the time in good condition online. 
Lodestone Bobble. This goes up 10, 10 to 13, 98. Another card that's seeing play in those Bergy God of Storytelling commander decks now. Recycle. This is an Azusa Lost but Seeking commander builds and more. It goes up 10, 39 this week to 20, 86. Scorch Ruins. This goes up 10, 63 to 62, 97. Good in Commander Kozilek, the Great Distortion builds, which are pretty popular, and more. Anzer and Ruins, this goes up 1115 to 1645, maybe a speculative response to all the tribal focus we've seen recently. Mana Vortex, another card from the dark, going up 1124 to 5303. Karn Silver Golem from Urza Saga, this does see some play as a commander, it goes up 1145 to 3473. Winding Canyons, up 1267 to $55. Humility up twelve sixty nine to eighty dollars. Hall of Gemstone. This can be found now in some new Vorinclex Monstrous Raider Commander builds and other places too. Of course, it goes up fourteen eleven to forty nine ninety nine. Energy Storm up fourteen sixteen to fifteen ninety nine. Treasury. Another card that is starting to see some increased commander play in Orvar the All Form decks as well. It goes up fourteen twenty one to one sixteen ninety eight. Morphling from Urza Saga. This is good in experimental Kraj commander builds and more. It goes up 1434 this week to 3588. Armageddon, another card from Revised. It goes up 1459 this week to 2495. Survival of the Fittest from Exodus of 1611 to $290. Solid commander card in a number of different builds. If you've been desiring this card, I'm sorry. Unfulfilled Desires goes up 1833 to 3150 this week. Mind Over Matter, solid commander card. It has seen some increased commander play recently in Queen Itinerant Meddler builds. It goes up 1838 to $116. Dream Hall's up 2032 to $69.77 in theory. High grade copies seem to be selling for around $50 currently though. Phyrexian Altar, the original copy from Invasion, up 2057 to 8437. However, honestly, I haven't been able to find copies selling for around $85. Online, it feels like high-grade copies sell for about $45 currently. With that being said, though, this is a great commander card. It's a good combo enabler in the format. This is seeing a little more playing commander now in those Cole the Forge Master builds. And this did get a command zone mention this week as a potential card in that deck, as well as a couple other decks based around Kelton cards. Those were Vorinclex Monstrous Raider, as well as Mord of the Frost. Granite Gargoyle from, you guessed it, Revised. It goes up 2206 to 2999. Hatred, this goes up 2289 to 6499. This does see some commander play in Lisa Shroud of the Dusk and more. Leeches, this jumped up 2311 this week to 2483. Maybe a response to the new Kaltime card, Finn the Fang Bearer. There's a chance that could be foreshadowing a return to poison counters in a future standard set. Stone Calendar up 2344 to 4804. Exalted Dragon goes up 2601 to 2695 this week. Sliver Queen, here's that Sliver Lord that is on the reserve list. Like I mentioned before, Sliver Commander deck's always going to be a thing. And Keltheim is bringing us creatures with Changeling. This goes up 2653 to 280. Apocalypse goes up 2833 this week to $37. All right, where do you think this card's from? No, it's from Revised. This is Copy Artifact. It goes up $30.86 to $182.85. And of course, this does see a lot of commander play in builds, including the popular Urza Lord High Artificer. City of Solitude. Now, this has seen increased commander play recently in your lock of Scorched Thrash decks. In theory, it's going up 3418 to 6899. Again, if you're looking at your big websites right now. But I have not been able to find high grade copies sell for that price. They've been selling closer to $25 to $50. Here's another card that is moving partially because of the elf support in Keltheim. This is Eladomri, Lord of Leaves. It goes up 6834 this week to 13999 though. Anvil of Bogardin, this goes up 6839 to 15038, or does it? High grade copies seem to be selling for about 110, which is close, but not quite there yet. When it comes to gameplay, this is in Commander Tiny Bones Trinket Thief builds and more. Now, of course, you are seeing this in Turgrid God of Fright decks too. And that takes us to the premium spotlight. Again, I just wanted to focus on cards that feel like they're moving pretty significantly in this section. There's tons of cards moving up in value all over the place. In a lot of cases, it is market manipulation. So today, I chose four cards that look like they are moving up in value, but there also might be at least a tinge of manipulation involved. And again, I don't think it's necessarily malicious manipulation. It could be people fishing for an offer out there. Morphling, this is the Judge Foil. It goes up 163.71 to 275 on paper. High-grade copies, though, don't really sell right now for more than $100. 
but considering the non-foil copy just spiked, I would expect those sales to increase a little bit over the coming weeks. Very similar story here with the Phyrexian Dreadnought Judge Foil. It goes up 260 to 425. Now, when I look at high grade copies, they're selling for about 140. But again, because the non foil copy of this card just spiked, I would expect that to change pretty soon. Do they get up to 425? Maybe not quite all the way there, but I feel like they're definitely going to be moving up. Next, we have the foil Palancron from Urza's Legacy. Now, the regular copy of the card just missed today, didn't quite make it in the video. This copy, though, I wanted to point it out. It goes up 444.32 to 884.44. Now, this is a more egregious example of market manipulation where the price is much higher than the sales. High grade copies seem to be selling for around 400. Now, the regular card has been going up in value. Again, I would expect this foil to continue to go up in value to some degree, too. When it comes to gameplay, it's a good commander card, good combo enabler, and it is seeing increased play now in those Orvar the All Form builds, too. And finally, one more foil from Urza's Legacy. It is Grim Monolith. This is going up 1,982.50 to 4,525. Now, I actually did see a high grade copy selling for that price point. It does seem a little high though, and it was a one off. So, someone might have overpaid. Again, it could be that fear of missing out kicking in, or it could have been a fabricated sale. So, hard to say right now what this card is actually doing. Just be careful if you're looking to pick up any cards right now. Do your homework. All right, with that being said, that does it for this episode of the Market Watch. And yeah, again, a lot of reserve list cards. The market is all over the place. Things are crazy right now for a variety of different reasons. One of the things to consider, too, is just the supply chain. We don't have Magic Fest going on, so you don't have all that buying, selling, trading of cards on a continuous basis. So when you look online where people are doing a lot of their shopping right now, things are drying up. And that's something you're seeing not just in Magic, but in all collectible markets. It's happening in comic books, sports cards, non-sports cards outside of Magic basically everywhere you look now. So it is hard to predict what the future holds. No one's ever seen this before. So will these cards stabilize? Will they retrace? How much will they retrace? I think they will retrace at some point. I think the question just is at this point, how much? With that being said though, until next time, stay safe out there. Thanks for watching. Please remember to like and subscribe and have a great day. Hey, thanks for watching. This video is made possible through the generous support of viewers like you on Patreon. Check out the description below for links to our Patreon page as well as our Amazon affiliate store where a small percentage of all sales will also help support the channel. Finally, if you haven't had a chance yet to subscribe, hit that subscribe button so you don't miss any of the new videos on Heroes and Legends. Talk to you again soon and have a great day.